Hello everyone, welcome back to your physics teacher. Uh, today we're going to be looking at section 1.2 from the Nelson textbook. So we're going to be looking at position versus time graph. And from the graph, we're able to get the slope, which is going to be the average velocity. And we're going to be doing some various calculations related to that. So the first question that we're going to answer is question number four. And in this question, it says, determine the velocity for the motion described by the graph. First thing we want to make a note of is looking at what type of graph it is. So in this case, we have a position versus time graph. And if you recall, for a position time graph, the slope gives us the average velocity. But we're too lazy to say average velocity. So normally, you're always going to be seeing it as just velocity. So velocity is the slope of the dt graph, which means it's going to be the rise over the run. And in this case, that would be the change in d over the change in t, because we have the rise as the position axis and the time or the run in the axis there. So let me erase this before it gets too messy. All right, but if you notice, that's just the same thing as the displacement or the change in time. So in order to calculate the slope, all we need to do is pick two points that are nice on our position time graph and calculate the slope. So here we want to pick nice points. And by nice, I mean ones that are lining up with our axis that they provided for us. So here the point is going to be 4, 12. And looking for another nice point, which again lines up nicely on the axis. It's going to be 2 and 6. So remember the slope formula, rise over the run, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So maybe a good strategy is to put those labels there so it could help us out. Again, this is just a, as a visual cue. You don't have to do this. So that's a visual cue. Now we can actually do the calculation. So y2 is 12, y1 is 6, x2 is 4, x1 is 2. So now we could just perform the calculation. So 12 minus 6 is 6, 6 goes on top, 4 minus 2 is 2, 6 over 2 is 3. So if we recall, the units on the top were that of position, which is meters, and that in the bottom is in time, so seconds. So this is meters per second. And because we got a positive quantity, we associate the positive quantity with the positive direction that they have on the graph, which is west. Now, that's not my favorite thing to always do because I prefer if they keep positive as east and negative as west. But this graph is trying to trick us. So here they assume the positive direction is the west direction. So this is the same thing as 3 meters per second west. So again, that's a small trick they're trying to confuse us. I might have confused you, so please leave a comment and that way I can help you out and clarify this question at the very end. Uh, for question number six, we have, what is the displacement of a horse that runs at a velocity of 3.2 meters per second south for 12 seconds? So let's draw our horsey. And the horse is running in the southern direction with a velocity of 3.2 meters per second south. And it does this during a time interval of 12 seconds. Now, they're asking us to find the displacement during this time. 
So since the horse is moving south, the displacement should be in the south direction as well. So we want to find the displacement vector. That's our unknown. But we have a relationship between velocity, displacement, and change in time, which is the formula of the position time graph. So here, to calculate it, we just use the relationship that we found before. Velocity is displacement over the change in time. And we could just rearrange this equation for the displacement only by multiplying both sides of this equation by the change in time. And now let's put in what we were given. 3.2 meters per second south times 12 seconds equals the displacement. Which is going to be 38.4 meters in the south direction. So here, the tricky part was working with vector quantities. Now, if you didn't want to keep carrying the brackets with the, the square brackets, you could have used a convention where instead of south, you could have written that as a negative number. And that would have still given you the same answer, because then at the end, you would have got a negative 38.4. And since negative is south, you could have made that final replacement. Okay, uh, make sure you hit and like, that way you promote this video a bit more and other students can appreciate that. So for question number seven, they're asking us, how many seconds will it take a car traveling at 100 kilometers per hour to travel a distance of 16 meters? Now, right away, I noticed that before what the question was even asking me, I have units that are not SI units, which are the accepted ones. So right away, before I get too excited to answer this question, we should first convert to SI units, which is kilometers per hour into meters per second. So to cancel out the units of kilometer, so in one kilometer, there's a thousand meters. Then to cancel out the unit of hour, in one hour, there's 60 minutes. Then to cancel out the minutes, in one minute, there's 60 seconds. So what do I mean by canceling out? Look at the units here. So kilometers on top, cancel out with kilometers on the bottom. Hour at the bottom, cancel out with the hour from the top. Minute at the bottom, cancel out with the minute on the top. So the two units you're left with are meters per second. So 100 times 1,000 divided by 60 divided by 60, you get 27.8 meters per second. Okay, so now that we've done the conversion, we should go back and actually read the question. And the question is asking us, how many seconds will it take a car traveling at this speed to travel a distance 16 meters? So the formula that we're working with is velocity equals to the displacement over the change in time. So if they're asking us the distance travel is 16 meters, and notice here I'm not using vector signs, I'm using the scalar portion of it. And the speed that it's traveling at was 27.8 meters per second. And to isolate for the time, I just need to rearrange my equation. So first, multiply both sides by the change in time. And then divide both sides by the velocity. And 
And at this point, all I have to do is just put in the values that I'm given. So 16 meters divided by 27.8 meters per second. So I get approximately 0 0.57 seconds. Now the tricky part is in the rearranging the formula, so make sure you leave a comment if you're a bit confused and I can help you out to get it. Alright, so now we're on question number 8. We're almost finished for today. Question number 8 is asking us, what is the velocity in meters per second? So see this thing, it tells us meters per second of a Canadian Forces CF-18 fighter jet that travels 8.864 kilometers south in 0 0.297 minutes. Okay, so we have a, a fighter jet. Okay, that's pretty exciting. And the fighter jet is traveling south at displacement of 8.6, sorry, 8.864 kilometers south. And it does this in a time interval of 0 0.297 minutes. So right away, uh, remember this question was asking us to put it into meters per second. So that kind of gives us a hint that we should be converting our units into meters and into seconds. So to convert kilometers to meters, just multiply by 1,000. Or move the decimal over three places. One, two, three. And to convert from minutes to seconds, divide by 60. I showed you that before, right? Okay, so we got 0 0.00495 seconds. And the formula that we're going to be using is the velocity of the object, or the fighter jet in this case, is the displacement over the change in time. So in this case, the displacement we found to be 8864 meters, and the time. 0 0.00495 seconds. Let's just put this into our calculator now. Wow, that's really, really fast. 1790701. That seems not correct. Oh, my conversion is wrong. Right, so in this case, I had to multiply by 60. Because there's 60 seconds in one minute. So you see how checking back out your answer to see if it makes sense or not? Because this was traveling way beyond the speed of sound. Okay, so let me make this correction here. Okay, this makes more sense, 497.42 meters per second. So it's just 
a little bit faster than the speed of sound, which we're going to be studying in this course at a later unit. So that's how you're able to check the velocity value. So for as a beginner, you may not have been able to pick up on it, but as you get more experience, you get the idea of uh, velocity scales. Oh, and that seems to be it for today. So stay tuned and then please watch the following video for the next lesson. Until next time.